What is up guys, in this video we're going to go ahead and create a bot in Python and it's going to be a very simple algorithm which is going to recognize some text and let me show you what we'll be creating. So first it shows us a display of you which means we can write something like hello, the bot will say hello, we can say how are you and we can even add some random text and it will still understand that we are asking how it's doing. Then let's say something like I would like to ask you for some advice for my friend Philip. And then it will tell us we should go to Google or go on the internet to see what Google would say. So as you can see, it actually recognizes the keywords and returns an appropriate response to what we wrote. This is not going to be using any AI or complicated machine learning. It's just going to be using a very simple algorithm which recognizes the words and returns a response. Let's also ask something like, what do you like to eat, sir? And then it will tell us, I don't like to eat anything because I'm a bot obviously. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started immediately with this project. And the first thing we have to do is create a new project. I'm going to be using Python 3.8 for this. And this whole program is going to be written completely in vanilla Python, which means we don't have to install anything. And that's why it's so great. So first of all, let's get rid of the boilerplate code. And we need to create a few imports. The first one is import re for regex. Then we have to go ahead and create a new Python file, which we're going to call long responses. And then we're just going to import that so we don't have to think about that later. So import long responses as long. Now the first thing we want to do is create an infinite while true loop so we can always get new responses. So we're just going to type in while true. And while it's true, we need to print that our bot is going to respond this text once we give it a certain input. So we're going to create another function really soon, which is called get response. And inside here, we're going to provide an input which just uses you as the text. And of course, let's put some quotation marks around that. And we're going to provide a comment that says testing the response system. Because in the end, if you have a website or something else, you will only be using this method to actually return an appropriate response. You could also use that for an API. And there's so many possibilities with this, but for testing, this is what we're going to do. Next, we're going to create this function that says get response, and it's going to take a user input. And the first thing we have to do is split the message into an array so we can analyze each word separately from the user message. So we're just going to call it split message, and that's going to equal re.split, and we need to provide some regex. So we're just going to go inside here, and I'm not going to explain this, but this just essentially removes all the symbols from the messages and allows us just to have the clean words separately. So it's much easier to recognize. So inside here, first we're gonna do a backslash S and a plus, which just checks for spaces. And then we're going to use a pipeline and we have to create a pair of brackets and add a comma, a semicolon, a question mark, an exclamation mark, a dot and a dash. So some very common punctuation that you would find in messages. Then we're going to add another backslash and an S and an asterisk. Then we need to provide the input that we want to convert, which is going to be our user input. And we want to make this lower. So it will just make sure since as you may know, Python is a case sensitive language. It will just make sure that all the letters go down to lowercase. So it's much easier to recognize when we process the message, of course. Then we have to go ahead and create a response, which is going to equal check all messages. And inside there, we're going to insert the split message. Then we will just return the response. Now it's time to go ahead and create the algorithm that checks all the messages and finds the most appropriate one. But before that, we have to go ahead and create a function that calculates the probability that the message is the corresponding message. And to do that, we're just gonna type in function message probability. And it's gonna take a few parameters. The first one's going to be the user message, then the recognized words. Then we need to understand whether it is a single response. And you'll understand what this means very shortly. And we're gonna set that initially to false. And we want to provide a list of required words, which is just going to be an empty list. Then the first thing we want to do is create a variable which says message certainty. And that's going to be set initially to zero. Then we need to create a Boolean which says has required words. And that's going to be set to true initially. So the first trick we're going to be using, which is one of the most basic ones you have for recognizing text, is the for loop. So we're gonna check for word 
in the user message, then we're just going to say if the word is in the recognized words, then we're going to increment the message certainty by one, meaning it's a more accurate sentence. Then we can go ahead and calculate the percentage. So we're just going to type in percentage, and this is the accuracy percentage. So that's just going to equal a float of the message certainty divided by the float of the length of the recognized words array. So the recognized words is going to be where we're going to insert the words we want the bot to recognize. And depending on how many of these words are recognized in that list, it will return us a certain percent between zero and 100%. And I just wanted to bring up that, of course, if you get stuck at any point of this tutorial, you can just go in the description box down below. I've inserted a link to my GitHub repository with the full project inside. So you can always copy and paste that or look at what you've missed just in case something goes wrong. Now we need to check that the required words are included as well. So we're gonna type in for word in required words. If the word is not in the user message, then we have to set has required words to false because we're missing a required word and this will just prevent us from wrongly matching a different sentence. And I'll explain this a bit better as soon as we create the next function, but for now we need this. And we will set a break. Now finally we can create the return statement of the function which returns us the accuracy of each sentence so they can later be compared and then it can later return to us the best response possible. So if we type in if has the required words is true or it is a single response, then we want to return an integer value of the percentage times 100. So it just converts the percentage to an integer and makes it a whole number. Else we will just return zero, which means nothing really matched. So it's going to be the lowest value possible. Finally, we can go down and fix this error by creating that function as well. So down here, we're gonna type in function. Ah, so down here, we're gonna create another function, which is going to be called check all messages. And it's going to take a message, of course. And the first thing we have to do inside here is create a dictionary. So highest prob list is going to equal this dictionary, which is just going to be an empty dictionary. And then we're going to create a helper function, which is going to simplify the response creation. So to do this, we'll just type in def response, and that's going to take a bot response, a list of words. It's going to insert single response to false initially, and it's just going to have the same required words as an empty list. Then we need to refer to this highest probability list as a non-local variable, so we can use it inside here. Next, we have to refer to this highest probability list and we need to create a key at the index of bot response. And that's going to take the message probability with a message, a list of words, a single response, and the required words. So all this function does is simplify adding items to our dictionary, which means we have a easier way to create a key and an easier way to insert the values over here. Now let's go ahead and create a comment and this is just going to be called responses and it's going to have this long line just to make it a little bit more easier to understand. So the first thing we can do is create our first response. So the key is going to be the response that you want the bot to answer to your recognized words. So for example, here it's gonna say hello and we need to insert a few keywords that it should look out for, such as if we say hello, or if we say hi, or if we say, let's say sup, or if we say heyo. So if it finds any of these words, it's going to, of course, calculate the percentage of whether it is a hello, and then it's going to return to us hello as an appropriate response. And we also should specify that this is a single response, and we're gonna set that to true, which means it doesn't need to look out for if it has any required words or not. Then let's go ahead and add something else, such as I'm doing fine and you, that's gonna be the response. And of course, inside here, we're just going to create an array of how are you doing? And here we need to insert something that is a required word. And of course we need to specify a required word this time, which is going to be how, because of, in case the user decides to write, what are you doing? We don't want the bot to respond, I'm doing fine and you. We want them to understand that. We want them to understand that how is a very crucial keyword for them asking, how are you doing? So for this one, we're gonna add the required words of how. And I'm not going to create so many responses. I'm just gonna give you a general understanding on how to create the responses. So you can add as many as you like, but uh, we're gonna create one more example for this. And this one's going to say, thank you. And what is it gonna say thank you to? It's going to say thank you to 
I love code palace. And that's another thing I forgot to specify, but make sure that all of these are in lowercase because right now when we are comparing the messages, we are looking for lowercase input. So everything should be in its bare format in lowercase when you are creating a response. And for this message to work, of course, we need the required words of both code and palace. So these must be present to get this response. Now, if we write something with code palace, it's going to say, thank you. Now let's go ahead and test this. So we're gonna type in best match, and that's going to equal the max value of these three, which is going to be the highest probability list. And it's going to return the key of the highest value, which will use the list once again with the get keyword. And we're gonna do a print statement, which says highest probability list. So you can see exactly what it is returning. And actually let's get rid of this pair of parentheses. Then we have to go down and return the best match. Now we can go ahead and run the program and see how it works. We're just gonna type in hello, exclamation mark. And as you can see, what it returns to us is an entire list or a dictionary with all of the values and the match percentage in each one of these. So hello got a 20% match because it is one of the five, of course, but it is a single response. So it still made it through and it still responded to us, hello. Now, if we write something such as, how are you? You'll notice that we'll get a 75% chance that it is this one over here and a 0% chance that it is hello or th this one over here. But let's pretend we write something such as hello, how are you? Now you might be wondering, which one will it respond? Hello or how are you? But of course it's going to respond to you, how are you doing? Because hello was only a 20% chance while the other one matched up to 75%, which of course overrides the hello and returns to you a more appropriate response. But let's type something that the program does not understand. You're going to see that it's going to return to you, hello. And we don't want that. We want the program to tell us something such as it does not understand or to try something else. And let's go ahead and create the function that will handle that. So let's close this. And we can also put a hash over here to cover this print statement. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and fix this return statement by typing return long unknown, which we have not created yet, but we will create in our long responses very shortly. And we want to return this unknown response if the highest probability at the index of the best match is less than one, which means it has a very low score, which is probably zero. And that means it's not a match for anything. So if all of the matches are less than one, then we are going to return this unknown response. Else we're just going to return whatever the best match is. So now we have to go to long responses. And inside here, we are going to import random. And we're going to create a function called unknown, just as we defined it over there. And as the first response, we're going to write, could you please rephrase that? Otherwise, we're going to add an ellipsis, or let's add another one such as sounds about right. And finally, we can add another placeholder message such as what does that mean. Then we need to use our special random function. So random dot rand range, which is going to go up to four because we have four random responses here. If you have more, just make sure this matches this amount of responses. Then we can go ahead and return the response. And also I want to show you how you can add a longer response because of course, as you saw here, we just added some very short responses. But if you add a very long response here, your program is going to look very messy. So what I did in the last example, I went ahead and created something such as this, a variable that's located inside this long responses Python file, and it's going to be called, let's pretend, our eating. And inside here, you can add a very long response, whatever you want, of course, something that will be a bit more clean than just typing it in our main Python file. So we're just gonna add, I don't like eating anything because I'm a bot, obviously. So now we can just refer to this variable over here in case we want to create a longer response, but it's going to be exactly the same as before. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that inside. As you can see right here, now we have a response that refers to long dot our eating. We still add the keywords and the required words, but this time when it returns the sentence, it's going to return this one over here. But now if we go ahead and run the program, you'll notice that if we ask, what do you like to eat? And it's gonna say, I don't like eating anything because I'm a bot, obviously. But let's write, what is the weather like today? 
You're going to notice that it doesn't really understand because we didn't create any responses for that. So in the end, it's up to you what messages you include, what keywords you want it to recognize, and so on. But that's actually all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. And as always, if you have any questions, feel more than free to leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.